Greetings fellow programmers, this is Pavel and we continue to build our C Sharp app for the student Paul. And uh, today we will capture the input from the radio buttons. So um, like I said in the last video, there is a property called checked change, which is right here for each radio button. So uh, if I select them and I will do, I will name the radio button, uh, I will, uh, radio button checked uh, event, which is right here, which is automatically created. And in it, uh, I will get, I will uh, capture which uh, of the radio buttons is being selected. Obviously, since the radio buttons, only one of them can be selected, so we can do just simply loop through all of them and see which one it is. Now you could do something like a switch statement and see if radio button one is, is being checked, then this is what's happening and so forth. But we can do uh, we can do it in a simple loop through all the radio buttons on the form. Now before I go any further, I created uh, for each of the uh, uh, radio buttons, I created a property for tag right here which corresponds with the rating uh, so rating number one has a tag one rating number five has a tag five that's important because that's the value that we will be actually capturing so I will do a for each and I will do the we are going to loop through radio buttons so I'll just call it RD in and our radio buttons uh, on this form are grouped together in a uh, in a box group box which I called GRP rating so we are going to see which what elements what radio buttons are in the GRP rating so GRP rating dot controls so we are looking uh, we are looking for radio buttons in the uh, group box uh, and so there's five of them and only one of them can be checked so if the radio button is no it's is the it's actually not RB let's make it RB for radio button so RB if it is uh, checked if we come across a, bu a radio button that is checked that's the one that we want there is no other that is being checked so we can simply uh, return uh, except this is I made it as an event which was my mistake uh, I don't want it an event originally I thought maybe uh, never mind so uh, I'll come back over here and I will simply delete this from the uh, from the events and I'll just make it a method and the reason for that is because I need a return value I need to return the value of the button that is being checked so uh, I'll just make it a regular method instead of an event so uh, okay so uh, if I go back to it and uh, I still have radio button checked but I will make it not void i'll make it an integer it will return the tag that is uh that is of the radio button that is being checked so i uh, deleted my my for each loop but it was uh, for each radio button uh radio button in the group box which i called group rating in the controls inside of the group box so if the radio button is checked or if you come across the radio button that is checked it will return the tag remember uh, radio button one has a tag one uh, radio button five has a tag five so it's an integer but obviously this would only return a string so uh, we have to convert it to integer 32 and we will return the radio buttons tag the tag of the button that is being checked so uh, now it's asking me uh, 
it's a capital T, I believe. That's why it's, yeah. It's saying that the return statement is missing. Uh, so I will return uh, zero by default, but it's not coming to this anyway, because there are radio buttons and one of them will be checked when we call this method. And we'll call this method uh, from our uh, Oh, where am I? From our else statement. So it's a uh, if not to load. Uh, I cannot find a. Oh, here when the the record click right. That's the one. So uh, if it uh, remember if it's uh, if you are recording from the uh, drop down, we'll we'll just add the index to it. If we're recording from the uh, radio buttons, we will assign the record the value that is being returned from the get uh, what did I what did I name it now I've, oh radio button checked not get checked uh, radio button checked method the method returns the tag or the integer of the radio button that is checked and we will pass it to our integer called record and once we have that we can enter this uh, record into our array as a new vote so uh, after this uh, remember like uh, one once i record the uh, the answer once i uh, when i record the answer i want this to update right away not, I don't want it to hold the old data because the new record has to be uh, added to it. So after the else statement or after the whole if statement, we will initialize the form again, initialize controls, we will call that, that will unselect everything for us. And we will uh, enter the new record into our array. But to do that, Instead of just uh, doing the for loop right here, I will create another method private void enter records and it will expect the record that we are passing uh, into our uh, array. And I will do a for each loop i is less than the number of. Uh, number of I forgot what I called it again oh geez number of ratings all right so so not number capital but number of ratings and I plus plus and over here we will simply uh, how do you find out where to uh, add the uh, the record remember there are five options or five uh, indexes in our uh, array and uh, but what it, all we have to do is uh, make a corresponding uh, entry to our uh, to our array so for example if I enter two if I choose uh, if I choose two from the radio buttons then I want to enter update this this line I want to update this to 25 if I enter 5 I want to update this number and this number basically is held in our array uh, based on the index now this is index 0 this is index 1 2 3 and 4 so all we have to do is check whether our record which holds the the answer or the vote one, two, three, four, and five, and put it into the uh, into the same index. Except not the same because the index is sta starts from zero. But uh, if it's the answer is one, we want to put it in index number zero. If the answer is five, we want to put it into index number four. So uh, we will simply do if the record equals. Uh, oh, sorry. If uh, the index, which is i, equals the record minus 1, 
in other words if this is a index zero and we have voted one one minus one is zero so yeah we would have a match meaning that we voted one if this was uh, index four and we voted five five minus one is four then we would enter uh, plus one into our fifth uh, index which would be over here in the 52 would become 53 so if the record uh, minus one equals i then we can uh, we have our uh, we can add the response to our array so our responses of the i we will increase it by one so instead of, again if it was a uh, if we voted number five it would increase this number by one which is would be 53 or if it were voted number uh, one then it would increase 13 to 14 and uh, when we do that after we update uh, our array we want to display everything again uh, we wanted to update the our display uh, or what we see in our in our form so I will call the display records so let's see if that's working so let's say let me first do something uh, that should throw an error I have two votings that should not uh, that should not be yeah you cannot vote using both it uh, uh, it clears it out so let me display the errors I um, mean the um, the records so and I'm going to select uh, let's say I'm um, two rating number two so this when I click record answer should change to 25 it's currently 24 and uh, it didn't change it sh uh, let me just see what I did or didn't do and uh, I have the this should display the records oh that's because I never called the enter records method oh, from here after we uh, in our L statement after we the radio buttons or the uh, drop down is being selected so enter records and it, it and we will pass the record to it all right so that's why because it, the method was never really called so uh, let me try again so again I'm uh, going to vote for two so this should change to 25 and it indeed did if I use uh, let's say five for the radio buttons this should uh, change to 53 and it did and it clears also as, uh, as I vote it refreshes it outputs new uh, new data and refreshes the form but of course if I load it now I'm loading it from the text file which is still uh, has the old data the new ones were not saved so uh, the easiest way to do it is to save it on uh, on the quit I mean uh, once you quit the uh, the app you can save the data straight from the from the array that holds the current uh, current data so I go to my quit again and before the application quits we will uh, we will record the new data into our file and I'll do the same thing like I did here I will use the try and using uh, as well so I will do try and inside of try I will do using and uh, I'm going to use uh, the var this one this time we will use the stream writer so as w equals new stream writer and it expects the file path which uh, we have coded so it's gonna be the uh, the file into which we are writing and we are simply going to override it uh, with the new data that has again being stored in the array so uh, we will do four into uh, let me do var i equals zero i is less than the number of ratings and i plus plus and in it I will simply write one line after another but I have to write it in the in the same form in other words the number one two three four and five and then comma and the votes so uh, 
I will do SW dot right uh, right line and I'm going to write the number uh, which is again one two three four and five but I start from zero so it's simply I plus one and I will append to it uh, the the comma and then I will append to it the responses uh, of the current index I uh, and that's that's how you write it it's very simply simple just one line and if there's some kind of a problem reading it uh, I will do uh, exception ex and I will do catch uh, it's already actually there so message box dot show and I will do unable to save data and uh, I want to and I also do the finally block, which basically means uh, this will always execute, no matter if there's an error or not. And the finally block after we, uh, even if you cannot save anything, once you click the exit button, you do want to exit. So finally, no matter what, we will exit the app. So let's see if that's working or not. So we load it and uh, let me display it. So let's vote for one. So that should be 14. It is. And let's vote for two, which should be 25. All right, let's quit. Remember, it's 14 and 25. Oh, we got a, we got a, some kind of, oh, that's because my, uh, it's just saying that the file has been modified outside of the editor. Uh, do you want to reload it? Yes, because I have the file open, the, the text file. And you can actually see that it, uh, 14 and 25 but let me close it and run it again so we don't get that message but if I click display results now it's 14 and 25 but let me change 14 to 15 just to verify it one more time it did change let me quit and if I load it the first number should read 15 when we display the the results of the data and it says 15 in other words the file is being saved correctly Okay, so this is it. This is the, the whole exercise. Uh, again, I used both uh, uh, drop down and uh, radio buttons. Normally you would have one or the other, but I hope it will show you that it showed you, you know, few tricks and things how to uh, have these uh, uh, form controls work. And uh, that you learned few, uh, you know, few, that few things that you got some pointers if you were stuck with in this exercise and uh, if you liked it please like it click the like click the share write some comments and i will see you in the next video take care